Hello everyone and welcome. Without wasting time, let's head straight to the topic, uh, metal layer basics in BLSI. So metal layers are deposited uh, after the base layer uh, manufacturing happens. So it is also called as a back end of, of the line in the manufacturing line process, right? So front end of the line refers to the base layer and the back end of the line uh, refers to the metal layers. So in VLSI especially, the main goal why why do we do uh, metal routing it's because the we have the goal of connecting each and every block in uh, a chip right and there will be connections between chips as well that is called as inter uh, integrated circuit um, connections so the main goal of the routing uh, in all the uh, uh, integrated circuit are following first of all is 100% routability which means there shouldn't be any um, connection left all the connections should be completed right and while doing so uh, it has to satisfy the design rule constraints right it has to pass through design rule chucks which are drcs uh, without which uh, that chip cannot be manufactured properly and if it is manufactured that way it will be faulty okay so and the third thing is minimum wire length we can route to a connection between two blocks uh, with the minimum of uh, 10 micron also maybe 20 micron also somehow we can connect it but what we want to achieve is with minimum wire length we want to achieve that connection to reduce the delay and Steiner length is something uh, which is very similar to uh, minimum length it is the minimum length uh, with which we can route any two nodes uh, in graph theory so that so we will have to try to match almost same as Steiner land it, if it is a little bit more it's fine but yeah so lastly we have to meet the timing goals which are set up in whole time uh, checks so without which definitely there will not be a function uh, the chip won't um, work functionally so these are the goals that we have and in order to achieve these goals there are many techniques and different uh, methodologies used in uh, different uh, you know processes right so in one process uh, they may use one metal layer m1 and in other some other process they you may use four metal layers m1 m2 m3 m4 with you know for three different types of vrs or something like that so depending on these uh, you know the, the complexity of the process technology node and uh, and the requirement that they have how complex is the design itself how many routings we have depending on that uh, many techniques will be used so uh, let's just concentrate on very basics here and uh, first of all I'll, uh, i've shown you a standard cell layout here right so where the connections between the poly and uh, you know uh, the power has happened right if you see that the the blue thing is the power the vdd and vss the powers and uh, the connections that you have in maybe sky blue colors those those are connected to um, the power and other stuff right so so what we understand here is uh, nothing is every connection here is either horizontal or vertical okay there is no connection which is at 45 degree or uh, some other uh, angle that is because the the cat tools use uh, something called as manhattan geometry so we don't use any other uh, angles of routing they don't support it and uh, as i know they don't support it but there could be some uh, possibility uh, a special case but uh, most of the uh, cat tools don't support uh, any other uh, geometrical routing the reason is uh, in order to avoid uh, the interlayer capacitances so what will what will happen with uh, this kind of uh, horizontal and vertical geometry is imagine we have only two layers okay maybe m1 and m2 layer of metal so what will happen if uh, if it is 90 degree connection is uh, like let's say the m1 layer is in horizontal that uh, routing direction is horizontal they don't allow anything to be routed in uh, vertical in m1 uh, so on uh, in m2 it's uh, it's vertical imagine that okay so if m2 is vertical and m1 is horizontal the the uh, what do you say the overlap of m1 and m2 uh, will be very less 
right so the the if you remember the parallel plate capacitance uh, between those two because there will be if there is a m1 there will be a dielectric layer which separates m1 and m2 so on top of that there will be an m2 so the parallel plate capacitance between m1 and m2 is minimized so in, in order to do that um, we use this kind of one hot geometry and many other uh, simple uh, many other issues also will be solved because of this one geometry so we understand that m1 uh, like uh, the connections will have either horizontal or vertical direction the right picture uh, shown here uh, tells you that uh, when the manufacturing happens the m1 will not be directly connected to uh, maybe n plus or uh, b plus whatever you call uh, it won't be directly connected it will be connected through a tungsten plug okay uh, this is because like uh, first is to avoid the contact resistance we we have to i mean we cannot completely avoid it but still we, we have to try to reduce it as much as possible because every contact is always associated with its contact resistance and uh, also in uh, newer technology nodes like seven nanometer and below they're using copper and all uh, for the metallization if they are using copper copper cannot be directly connected to uh, an n plus region it cannot be connected to the substrate like that because copper is a notorious defect if it is connected to uh, maybe n plus region the diffusion region what will happen is the copper atoms will diffuse uh, into the, the n plus and it will d eventually destroy the transistor right so this should not happen so we use something called s tungsten plug and on top of that the, you see the picture and uh, uh, we can understand that there is a dielectric surrounding that tung tungsten plug and on top of that we have something called as metal one right but there are cases where if, if, if our design is uh, pretty small and where are, there are very few hundreds of routings that's all uh, in that case we may have we may can uh, you know close the entire routing in one layer or ma maximum to maximum two layers but if the design is so complex that there are thousands of nets there are um, you know hundreds of thousands of nets to route in that case uh, it's better and it's always good to um, separate those connections into different layers right and it is not always possible to accommodate all of them uh, in one layer definitely so the connections uh, that happen between the blocks are um, you know categorized into two types of connections one uh, one type is global interconnects and the second type is uh, local interconnect okay so the local interconnections are the connections between the standard cells mostly in a in a particular block okay so uh, a design entire chip uh, will be divided into blocks and those blocks will contain uh, leaf cells also called as standard cells whatever you call it which are and or not gates or something like that so those the connections which are very local in nature if the connection uh, happens between the standard cells next to each other those connections are mostly called as uh, local interconnects and that those connections are of very small distance the connections will be maybe in uh, maybe in 0.1 or 0.2 microns like that so those connections can happen uh, at lower metal layers def uh, definitely so that's the reason why you see that the local interconnects uh, are routed in lower metal layers and the global interconnects are routed in higher metal layers the reason is to avoid the resistance okay if if, if a global interconnect is connected let's say uh, a length of uh, 12 to 15 micron connection or 100 micron connection happens in uh, m1 let's say what will be the resistance that it, uh, it will offer so the, it will offer huge resistance and that will impact the delay so that's the reason why we will go for higher metal layers if the length of the connection is pretty pretty long right so uh, that's one advantage and one more thing uh, if if we are having a global interconnect it's current uh, carrying capability also should be good so we make the global interconnects i mean the higher metal layers uh, as wider okay so m1 the width of the m1 metal will be uh, definitely less than that of the width of the m2 and width of m3 will be higher than that of width of m2 
right with the m4 will be higher than that of m3 like that uh, the as as we go up the width will uh, increase uh, you can see that in the figure also that the width of the metals will increase as we uh, go up okay this is also to avoid electromigration as well so the they will they can carry high amount of current uh, with uh, when they offer less uh, resistance but the capacitance will be higher so what we cannot um, you know use for local interconnect for local interconnect we cannot use higher metal layers if we do so it will offer high capacitance anyway the time uh, you know the delay will be uh, two is equal to rc the multiplication of resistance and capacitance if one of them is high definitely we will end up being uh, you know high delay right so we we have to avoid those kind of things for local interconnects we should use um, we should always try to use the lower metal layers maybe m1 m2 m3 m4 or something like that and for on top of that if the, if the design is too complex uh, we will go for higher metal layers and if those are used for global interconnects uh, mostly like clocks and um, the connections that happen between the what do you say uh, blocks the uh, big blocks or chiplets those connections um, those things happen as uh, global uh, interconnects and maybe there is a connection uh, uh, at one end of the uh, block and there is an another block at the another end of the block uh, so these two should uh, uh, should be connected we will always try to place uh, those cells which are connected to uh, next to each other but there is a case that this can happen that there is too much congestion that we cannot place them together uh, there are so many cells that a single cell is connected to so it will have a large distance so that connection also should go to higher metal layers in order to avoid resistance so these are the cases which um, uh, th these are the types of signals which we have to take care of uh, the metal layers will be um, you know different according to the complexity of a chip and how many metal layers we want to have so these are the things about uh, metal layers and its basics in vlsi uh, i'll see you in the next video thanks a lot for watching and bye bye